Hi, this is my new power inverter and today I'm going to review and test it. Let's open it up. It's pure sine wave. Super thick cables, high current handling. They have also given me a remote switch. So this is the main inverter. Oh, it's really big. Hey, one more thing, you also get some extra fuses. So guys, that's the close up and front view. Here, this indicates pure sine wave. Continuous power rating, 1500 watts. Power inverter, pure sine wave. So peak is 3000, but continuous is 1500 watts. Sweep power, side view. So the good thing is that we have been provided with two exhaust fans for cooling it up really fast. And the red as usual is positive, black being the negative. And now the back. So that's uh, the plug, 220 volts output, your sine wave again. AC output voltage will be displayed over here. DC input voltage from your battery will be displayed over here. That's your earth, that's your on off, power on and then alarm. And that's where your remote gets connected. Now this is your remote switch and uh, here as you can see it indicates inverter on and alarm on and then again on off. Let's keep it to off. The wires looks like my internet LAN cable. So that's gonna fit in like this and taken out from here like this. Now comes the base again 1500 watts. DC input voltage is 12 volts DC. Output is 220 to 230 with a frequency of 50 hertz pure sine wave once again. Here we have the super thick battery connector cables. So two of them have been connected in parallel to increase the current handling capability. Each of them is 6 mm in total making it 12 mm wire. Here as you can see the copper strands looks pretty good. And it's more than 90% efficient with a high temperature protection of 70 degrees. And that's your low voltage protection of 10 volts, recovery voltage 12.5, high voltage protection of up to 15 volts. So let's connect the wires. So guys, your hidden question for today is, what was the generator output current difference for core and coreless test with neodymium magnet rotor? Here I have my 35 ampere R. 12 volts battery so before connecting it let's see if it is charged yeah red is positive and black is negative okay let's turn it on oh. so it's showing 12.4 volts here for the dc input from the battery and the output is 224 volts ac let's connect some load so guys here i'm going to start with the no load current loss testing so here as you can see that it is less than one amps now guys since the current display was fluctuating a lot between 0 0.40 to 1.10 so i'm going to take it as a 0.7 amps 12 volts making it around 8.4 watts of loss for such a big inverter it's like negligible so here i'm going to start with this 100 watts bulb Oh, it's not lying. Oh! <laughs> you see? It's glowing really bright. Let's see the drop in voltage. And here we are doing around 11.8 volts. So guys, here I'm outside my house. So there is going to be a lot of disturbance. Oh, but anyways, uh, this what you see is an aluminum piece which I'm going to cut with an angle grinder. So yes, I'm going to test an angle grinder with this inverter. Let's see if it can cut that. So let's turn our inverter on. Starting with the free spin first. <laughs> you see, it is running really fine. Starting with the cutting process. Here as you can see is the cut I have made. I'm not going to cut it completely because I have to save the battery. I have to do many more tests. Well guys, the thing is that it is not able to weld because I haven't placed big enough battery. But yes, as you can see that it has started the welding machine. Okay, so starting my drill press.
you see it created a 10 mm bore so guys now i'm going to try and test my lathe machine with this inverter 1500 watts and small battery let's turn it on so that's my mini lathe let's see if it can turn this one on as you see the display has begun to show zero rpm let's increase the rpm <laughs> you see that it is even powering up my lathe machine So guys, it's time to start some lathe machine tests. Now guys, here I'm going to measure its weight. As you can see that its weight is only 2.8 kgs and it is really light when compared to other inverters with such a high power rating. Well, as far as the waveform test goes, yeah, it indicates pure sine wave. Now let's turn off the inverter. The wave goes to zero. And here as you can see the other details, VRMS uh, 225.6 and frequency exactly 50 hertz. So it's quite precise. Now guys, I would also like to know how this inverter looks from inside. I mean the circuit. So let's open it up with my drill machine. Oh, wow, now that is interesting. Two huge heat sinks. And that's uh, the main transformer. 12 to 220 volts, 1500 watts. And uh, there is another one with the same rating. And those were your exhaust fans to cool it up. Well, there's also a super big inductor core. Toroidal. And if you look closely, there are power MOSFETs mounted on the heatsink and uh, they are around 3, 3, 6, 7, 8. In total, 8 on one heatsink and 8 on this side too, although these are uh, like uh, smaller ones. And this one that you see is your temperature switch thermostat that is going to turn on the cooling fan uh, when the heat sinks are like really hot. So guys, that completes the review video. Let me know in the comments if you liked the inverter and if you want to buy it, link is provided in the description. You can check it out. Yeah, that's it. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.